In this video, I will describe set building notation. This is a very useful notation to construct lots of sets. I'm going to do it with an example. Here is my example. I'm defining a new set and it's called A. So this part here is the name of the set. And then here between curly braces, I am describing a set. Um, and always description is surrounded by curly braces. There is another important symbol in here. That's the column. This column is read as such that. Uh, such that is a phrase that appears a lot in mathematics. And it's always in this very specific context when we are using it to construct a set this way that we write it as column. In any other context, don't use column. Column only means such that for this specific use. So once I put it this way, I can actually interpret this sentence and read it in English. Uh, what this means is that A, A is the set of integer numbers x such that x squared is less than 6. And if I put it that way, I actually know what this is exactly. I can describe this. This set has only five elements. It is the set of minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. We can do many more examples. So let's see a few more. If uh, you understand the notation, you should be able to tell me what these three sets are. So I invite you to pause the video now if you need it, think about it briefly, and when you have the answers, press play again. Here are the answers. The first one is very similar, except I'm insisting the numbers have to be naturals. Therefore, I only get 0, 1, and 2. The second one is yet another name to describe the natural numbers. So this is nothing more than that. And as for the third one, this contains just one element. This is the set 0, because any other real number will, be, will have a square that's positive. So there's nothing else. As I said at the beginning, this notation is very useful and there's many sets we can construct with it. There is one particularly important family because it appears a lot, that is intervals, and I'm going to conclude introducing that example. I start with two real numbers, a and b, and I'm going to construct a few sets with those two numbers, which are the things I call intervals. There are various ways to do this. Here is the first one. Everything I've written here is simply the name of the set. And the description of the set is as follows. It is the set of real numbers which are between A and B, and I am both including A and B. Uh, geometrically, if those are the numbers in the real line, this could represent this segment from A to B, and I am including both endpoints. I could also do the same thing, but not include the endpoints. I could write it like this. The notation I am using is, if I want to include the endpoint, I put a square bracket. If I don't want to include it, I put a round bracket. And geometrically, I color the dot if the point is included, and I don't the point is not included. I could also include one of the endpoints, but not the other. For example, or we could change that and include A, but not B. A different variation is to put a bound on one of the sides, but to leave it unbounded on the other side, like this. Notice that infinity is not a number. We are never including infinity. This is just a piece of notation to say that I'm taking real numbers greater than A and nothing else. I'm putting no constraint on the other end. There are other variations. For example, I could write the following. But by now, I'm sure you can write the definition and the geometric interpretation, so I will leave that as an exercise. To conclude, uh, a note of caution. This is the way I've been writing an interval for which I do not include the endpoints. This is the common notation in English, but 
if you are in a French-speaking country, chances are you will encounter something slightly different. It's actually just a different piece of notation to mean the same thing.